Hey everybody. Hi. How many of you have never been to a laser before? <laughs> Perfect. I've been to one and it was maybe three years ago. Bio curious. It's a hacker space for biotech. We started four years ago and it was the first of its kind in the world. When we started, our goal was to make biotechnology more accessible. That's because when we went out to the marketplace, can you hear me up there? Yes. Right here. That's fine. Okay. Um, when we started, the marketplace was several thousand dollars a month if you wanted to try out an experiment. Let's say you had an idea and you wanted to try it out. It cost thousands of dollars a month, and that meant it was really only accessible to really great scientists who can write a solid grant, an entrepreneur who can give a really good pitch and raise a couple million dollars. Instead, what we did was we created a gym membership for biotech. It's $100 a month, and anybody can come in and try an experiment. And they can come in and experiment with friends. So four years later, I think the question I've been asking myself is, is BioCurious successful? I don't know. So is BioCurious successful? Uh, in Silicon Valley, success is pretty easily defined, I think. It has to do with startups. Uh, it has to do with uh, inventions and big ideas. And so is BioCurious a place for all of those? So in terms of startups, we've had a couple really interesting companies that I think uh, you're going to find kind of curious. First is called a Glowing Plant. The Glowing Plant Project started BioCurious. Two co-founders met, met there. And what Glowing Plant is doing is they are making glowing plants. <laughs> Their goal is to make a nightlight that's a little bush that glows in the dark and sits on your bedside. Oh my wow. Another company is called Real Vegan Cheese. Their goal is to make real vegan cheese. So they're, the project names are very easy to understand. They're, but what does that mean? So it means that they're taking yeast. So normally you use yeast to make beer. They're changing the DNA that's in these yeast and they're adding in DNA from a cow. So making cow's milk without cows. So you can make milk and cheese without having anything that moves. So startups, cool. How about inventions? So there's a, a group of biocurious called the Bioprinter Group. Uh, how many people know what a 3D printer is? Wow, solid, all right. So 3D printer, imagine if it printed living things instead of plastic. There's a community project at BioCurious, which means that anybody can come on Thursday night and work on it. They've published their designs online on instructables.com, so you can get this great photo set of photos that describes all the instructions on how to build it. And their idea is being used in universities around the world, this idea and this, this model that they've, they've started. So inventions, yeah. And is BioCurious a cool idea? Is it something that's that's worth spreading? Or four years later, is it just the only the only place of its kind? There are dozens of places like BioCurious that have started up all around the world. I've gotten to visit ones in, there's one in Paris, France, there's one in Cork, Ireland, and Copenhagen, Denmark. I never would have visited those places otherwise. Well, maybe Paris, because it's really cool. But, <laughs> so, you know, is, is BioCurious successful? We've got We've got startups, we've got inventions, we've got this idea that's being heard all around the world. Yes, definitely. But that's not why I'm here to talk to you tonight. So, I was at BioCurious two weeks ago. I was there for the Microscope Community Project. I wasn't really there for it, I was sort of standing on, in the corner. And people were coming in, and, and the, the goal of this group is they want to create a research-grade microscope. They want to do it open source, so they want to make a low-cost design that anybody can use. 
and, and have it work really well. So these people come in and they're, they're, everybody sits down and they all kind of don't know each other. It's one of the first meetings. And the first guy that comes in, he introduces himself. He says, I drove here from Vallejo. And we're in Sunnyvale. That's a two-hour drive. He drove two hours to come work on this microscope project. Next to him is this woman, and she works at Google. She works full-time at Google, which you know what full-time at Google is, right? That's like full-time. <laughs> and she's making time to come to this microscope project because she's curious about biotech. She works on the search bar. It's not like she's a biotech person at, at Google. She works on search, so then you type everything into. And then next to her is Maria, and Maria's one of the leaders at BioCurious, and she used to do marketing at Apple. Now she's a leader in this hacker space for biotech. And next to her is Eric, and Eric's actually a scientist. He's a scientist by day, scientist by night. He comes to BioCurious, and he is leading this microscope project. Even he is there out of pure passion because he just got back from Shenzhen, where he's there for a couple weeks, which is in China, totally opposite time zone. He's jet lagged. He just got back last night. He comes in late and he says, I'm sorry I'm late. I was in Shenzhen. <laughs> but he is all these people. Why are, why are they here? Why did this guy drive two hours to come to, to, come to this little place? Why did this lady take time off, off work? These people are here because they are passionate, and they're motivated, and they're curious about biotechnology. And that sense of surprise that you can get when you try something, when you do an experiment. We get plenty of people from all, all over San Francisco, all over the Bay Area, who come in and just want to try an experiment. Maybe they got spooked from biology back in middle school or back in high school, and they haven't tried it since. But they come because they want to check it out. It sounds cool. So you don't have to even be a member at BioCurious to experience all of this. I've seen it happen in just two hours. So we have groups from all over the world that come to BioCurious, and they want to check out what we're doing. And so one thing we do is we do workshops. We had a group from Switzerland who was visiting. Uh, they're a big chemistry company, and so it's a whole bunch of executives, and they're coming into their first biotech lab ever, which is BioCurious. And we're going to show them this experiment. It's called the Iliad Project, and it's by, designed by a really cool guy in, at NASA named Josiah Zaner. And the goal of the Iliad Project is to discover new antibiotics. Antibiotics are really important. So penicillin, right, discovered on a piece of moldy toast. Uh, Neosporin, you put it on your cups and they get better. Can we discover new antibiotics? The idea is yes. The idea is there are species that have never been looked at being discovered on the streets of New York City. You probably walk past a, a species that nobody has ever seen before on your way here tonight. So how do you discover new antibiotics? How do you discover these, these unseen things? The Iliad Project, we basically we send everybody out into the backyard at BioCurious and we pick plant samples. So we're going to be taking these plant samples and mixing up with bacteria and seeing do the bacteria die. It's a pretty easy test, and it's something that even these people who haven't ever been to a biotech lab can, can, can do it. And maybe they can discover a new antibiotic. And so what I remember is I am in the, the backyard of BioCurious, and it's not, it's not the backyard of your childhood. It's not something that you would read in some amazing fairy tale. BioCurious has a very corporate backyard. You know, like lots of asphalt, these bushes that are like completely squared off, flowers that are placed ever so carefully. And so what I remember is this, this woman from Switzerland who's never been to a biotech lab before, she is, she's out in this parking lot with me picking leaves mm -hmm. off plants. And she would never be caught dead doing that. This is like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> Walking around a parking lot, reaching out and grabbing things. And so what I remember is she is she's wearing this, this business suit. She's got a business suit, business skirt, business high heels. And I remember she's, she's stepping over this, this bush. It's like expertly trimmed by some sort of chainsaw. And she's reaching up into the, the redwood tree. And she pulls out a leaf. And she, she looks at it and she says, is this going to work for our experiment? And I say... 
I don't know, but let's try it. And she smiles. And, and in that instant, I can tell that what she's feeling is this sense of excitement, this sense of surprise and awe that she doesn't know if this is going to work. And that, that we don't know it's going to work. We don't know whether this is going to test for antibiotics or not, but that we're going to try it. It's going to be surprising. And there's this feeling of, of awe that maybe she hasn't felt in a really long time. And maybe you haven't felt if you've worked at a big corporation or a big job where it's kind of you go in every day and do the same thing. I know I've felt that way. And that's what I love about BioCurious is that we're able to share that feeling of, of passion and of motivation and curiosity, even just wandering around the parking lot picking leaves. <laughs> and it gets even better. You don't even have to do any lab work to get this feeling of inspiration. I sat at BioCurious a week ago. I checked my email for three hours. And I know that you've done the same thing. You go in, sit on your computer, and kind of peck, and time flashes by. That's what I was doing. But at BioCurious, it was a completely different experience. At BioCurious, I sat there and checked my email, and all these amazing conversations were going on around me. All these amazing people were working and, and discovering new things. Somebody was asking me, have you ever heard of quantum biology? I don't know what, I have no idea what quantum biology is. It's like some sort of new field. Apparently, BioCurious has a meetup group every Sunday that's like working on quantum biology and they're sort of getting to be the cutting edge of the field. The big deal is they get to play with lasers, so that's cool. Somebody else in the back is talking about, you know, here's this broken piece of equipment, how do we, how do we fix it? How do we kind of hack it and, and get it working again? And this feeling is really amazing because it's, it's, I'm just checking my email and all around me is just curiosity about what people are doing. People are there just because they're curious. Nobody's being paid to be there. BioCurious is all volunteer, all nonprofit. Everybody's there because they really want to be there. And I want to share three takeaways that I think that, you know, it's not about just biotech. I think it's something you can apply to whatever you do. Maybe it's chemistry or physics, or maybe it's accounting, or maybe it's law. But understanding curiosity and motivation and passion and helping people to, to really bring that out. And so I have three P's. The first P is people, places, and public. And so people means change up the people that you work with. I've been lucky enough to do a lot of biotech projects, and I've brought in some really wacky people. I work with people who are great at marketing, psychology, accounting, and they have great insights. So the more you can change up the people that you work with, Bring in your best friend. Bring in the person you've probably sworn off as like, they would never get what I do. Bring them in for a day and work on something with them. And you'll discover that feeling of excitement and surprise together. And then people, or that's people, and then places. So change the place where you work. Come to a biotech hacker space like BioCurious. You can check your email. I don't care. You can do whatever you want. Change the place. Switch, switch offices with somebody down the hall. Change up the place that you work. That's what happens at BioCurious, is people have never been to a biotech lab before. And it really unleashes this feeling of, of passion and motivation. And then public. Public is a little bit more complicated. So I told you about the BioPrinter project. I told you about the Glowing Plant project, Real Vegan Cheese. All those things started as what we call community projects, which means it's a project that's open to everybody. If you can create a community project in your job or in your life, invite everybody in your neighborhood to work on something. Invite everybody in your building. We get so many people who come in and say, I work for a giant biotech firm. Let's say I work for Genentech. I've never been to a biotech lab before. I work in HR or accounting or manufacturing, and I've never, I have no idea what's happening in the labs. Think about all the people that, that you work with who have, have no idea what it is that you do and that they would be curious and excited to hear about it. Maybe it's your building, maybe it's the Bay Area. But if you can open up what you do and create these public community projects, I think you can add a lot of passion and motivation to what you do. So people, places, and public. 
BioCurious is a nonprofit. It's completely volunteer run. We're in Sunnyvale, about 20 minutes from here. If you're curious, you can check us out at biocurious.org. And you can also email me, tito at biocurious.org. It's up on the screen there. And I would love to take any questions you have about anything. Thank you.